in this tutorial we're going to be making a money drop script so when our player is killed a pile of money drops right on his dead position and it gives an ad action and on that ad action it gives us the ability to pretty much anybody who walks by can pick up the amount of cash that the player was holding and dropped when he was dead it's pretty much similar to how well you would see this in a lot of Altus life servers for example so we're going to be needing to make this multiplayer so you cannot play this in single player because you cannot easily respawn to be able to see it so to do so go over here to attributes multiplayer and by default respawn should be disabled just set it to respawn on position of death so the stuff that we are going to need this is just the name of the uh, class name of the money that we're going to be using we're going to need to be using create vehicle to create the actual object on the player's position add action to well add an action to the money that we create with create vehicle we're going to be using set and get variable and get it and kind of giving an explanation on this because this is extremely useful for pretty much a lot of stuff that you will be doing in the future remote execution to remotely execute the add action so all clients can see it and actually use it and we're going to be using the event script uh, where is it on player killed so it's going to run when the player well is killed so we can go ahead and start by go ahead and create that file on player killed we don't need this anymore for the example and open it up now you'll see in our init.sqf we already have our cache variable we're just going to go ahead and set it to 50 so over here on on player killed since it's going to be running when the player is killed we're going to want to create a vehicle well, an object on the player's death. So we can get the player itself by, if you look over here at the little pr the arguments that it takes in. For here, it says the first one is old unit, second one is the killer. We're just going to be using the old unit to get the position off of. So unit equals this select zero. Now we want to get that unit's position. So we're just going to use get, well, get position. So POS equals get POS unit. Now we want to create the vehicle on that position. However, I like to actually just move the, create the vehicle at the top right or left of the corner, wherever it is for 000 on the map for coordinates and move it. So we have our class name right here. We're going to do money object equals the money class name, create vehicle, zero, zero, zero. So it's going to be at the very top corner of one of the, well, of one of the corners on the map. Then we're going to set the position. So money object, set, position, position. So now you will see when we go in game, go ahead and start in multiplayer. All right. My character's right here. I go ahead and respawn. You will see on his body, it created, well, an object that is money. Now we're going to be making this so it's able, we're able to pick it up and pick up the amount like actually earn the amount that he had on him so since our amount of money is 50 when we died and our money amount is 50 now when we pick this up we will have a hundred dollars <throat> all right so the next step would be we're going to go ahead and just remotely execute an ad action so go over here and remotely executing an ad action is different than just going normally so normally it would just be, you know, unit, or not unit, money object, add, action, then your stuff in here. But in this case, since we're remotely executing it, it's going to be done a little differently. So go ahead and just do remote execute the type, which is 
add action and we don't need to actually pass anything else since everything else by default is going to be what we want so targets is going to be set to everybody do you want to progress I believe is true by default yeah doesn't really matter but if you wanted to change it to false so join in progress players could not see it you would just do but leave everything else the same just do zero false okay now we go back here to the add action page now this is the part where it's going to be different All right, so we have our arguments here which as you can see in the remote execution well parameters So we're going to do the object that's going to be assigned to. So that is money object. Then we're going to have the rest, so which is going to be the title here. So pick up money. Then our script. So the script we're just going to leave blank for now so we can actually make sure we see the add action. Then it's going to be the arguments which we do not need so we just leave that as blank opening and closing square brackets priority we want that to show at the top of the add action list if there's anything else going around so we're going to set it to six then show window which is pretty much when you walk up to it it starts to appear I personally do not like that so I'm setting it to false hide on use yes we want that so set that to true shortcut not doing anything on it and it says it's a string so open and closing quotations then the condition condition we do want to change and it says it is a string so we have our open and closing quotations and inside it we want to make it so if the player is within let's say two meters of the money the add action will appear if they're any farther than that it will not appear so that will prevent people from being I don't know 50 meters away and being able to pick up pretty much pick up the money from that distance so it says here special variables are passed to the script code our target and this target is the object money object and this is referring to well, us so we can use the distance command to get the distance between the two so target distance this and we want that to be less than two so that's gonna that should be about two meters or so then the radius which we do not need to worry about either so we're just gonna set that to the default value which is 50 it says then unconscious players to access it we don't want that false selection just a string leave it empty memory point also a string just leave it empty which we really don't even need to pass these in either. It, they're just going to resort to their default values which is why they say optional. Uh, you do not need to place anything that is optional in it if you do not want to. But if you want to work your way down to where you can add a condition you have to add everything before the condition into it if that makes any sense. So now when we save it assuming we did everything correctly when I respawn, there should be a add action right here on the money saying pick up money. We click it, nothing happens. We haven't done anything to that yet in the script. So our add action is in fact working. Now here's where we get on to set and get variable. Now you'll see here where it says fire space, which is pretty much the space that it's going to be activating in or being known in I guess is the word for it so this is going to be if you remember anything about locality like I said cache is going to be global so our player can access that cache var variable anywhere but cache equals 50 this one's local so we cannot access it for instance out in this script we cannot do anything with underscore cache because it is local to init.sqf now the same thing goes with pretty much clients in general and op all objects pretty much so if we want to be able to assign our cache variable to the money object we have to use set variable 
So when we do, by the way, var space is just the object name for now. So money object set variable, then the name, and then the value. So we're going to pretty much be creating a variable on money objects. So just like we created cash on our own machine, or on our own player pretty much, we're creating another variable on money object. So if money object was another player, you could think of it kind of like this. We're sending our cash variable to another player, but in this case we're sending it to the object, which is that money. We go ahead and give it a name. We're just going to call it a cash amount. So now money object has a variable called cash amount that is equal to our variable cash. Whoops. So we can go over here to our, this is where our script is going to be. And just to make it a little bit neater and nicer to read, we're going to do it this way. And so this is where we're going to use get variable. Get variable is just like how you would normally assign a value to something pretty much. So it's going to be the variable we want to assign it to the variable space that it was created in, which is money object, then the command get variable, and then the name of that variable, which is cash amount. So we're going to make new variable. We're just going to call it amount. We're going to set it equal to, instead of doing money object, we're actually going to set it to this select zero. Because in add action, just like you saw, we have target and this. We have, all right, on on player killed. When the player is killed, you have these first two things. The old unit, which is us that died, and we have the killer, which is somebody shot me and killed me, it would be them. So how we got the old unit was with this select zero, and we just assigned it to unit. Well, this is going to be the exact same thing. So we're just setting amount equals, and this here is going to be the object. So it's going to be the money object, which I'll give an example of here in a second. So if we were to actually do money object, it's going to throw an unknown variable because really it's it just doesn't know what it is, if that makes any sense. It, money object itself is not defined all around. Whereas when somebody picks it up, doing this select zero, anybody who walks up and does the add action, it's going to automatically just pretty much the money, the object itself is going to be known or pretty much known for everybody with this command here since it's inside the add action. That was an absolutely horrible explanation that I butchered, but eh, whatever. All right, so amount equals the select zero, which is our money object. Then we use get variable, get variable. Then we want the variable name, which is cash amount. Then we stop with a semicolon. Now we're going to have our next script. We're going to go ahead and hint the amount. So hint string. Actually, we're going to make it nice and neat for when the player picks it up. So we're going to do format money taken then percent one and amount so when it says money taken percent one is going to be printing out amount in place of percent one so if we go to test it go ahead and respawn so it spawns our money on the dead player pick it up money taken 50 so it knows the amount so let's say just like I have $50 on my character right now if I were to print it 50 so let's say I change it to I'll change my cash to equal 1 2 3 or 1 2 2 3 4 now it prints out 1 2 2 3 4 because that's what my cash variable is I go ahead and respawn and I go to pick it up. Money taken. 
one, two, two, three, four. So that's how get and set is going to work in this case. So it's pretty much it's setting a variable on the actual object itself, which is the money, and then we're retrieving that variable using get variable and assigning it to amount. So that way, when the player picks it up, it assigns it to amount. But when the player picks it up, it he knows what it is since it's inside the script itself. So in here we can also assign our cash amount to add whatever we picked up. So cash equals cash plus amount. So now if we have $50 right now and we pick up $50 from a dead player, we will now have $100. Which you don't really need me to show you this as it's pretty self-explanatory. But we start out with 50. We pick up, actually I'll show it with a hint real quick first. We have $50. We pick up the money. We hint our amount again. We now have $100. Pick up the money again. We now have $150. Now, in order to make that go away so it does not appear for anybody else after somebody picks it up we just simply do delete vehicle this select zero again because it's assigned to the money object I'm also going to give one more example after this for how you can have it set for multiple different sides so if you have like a let's say for an in Altus life, for example, we have our civilian side. Let's say I'm, in, I'm a civilian, and there's a blue force side. If I'm a civilian and I walk up to it, I want to be able to pick up the money and pretty much have it on my character so I can use it later. Let's say I'm a cop right now. I can pick it up, and it'll delete it. It'll do without doing anything else, or it'll, I don't know, do something. Anyways, you saw there it deleted it. So if we wanted to go that route, that's where we pretty much modify the remote execution command. So we're going to give another example on this. You'll see here where it says targets. Now if you remember with public variable client we could use client IDs to pretty much activate a public variable event handler on a specific client. Well this works kind of the same way. You can use client IDs and you can also use specific things. Like if you want to do a specific side you would just define that. So you could do, like, since I'm blue for right now, I will do west. Now, if I wanted to make a separate one for an op for unit, I can just do east. Instead of saying pick up money, it'll say, I'll just do pick up money op for, pick up money blue for. So, right now, if I was to play, since I'm blue 4 unit, it will say pick up money blue 4 on the item and not pick up money op 4. And it'll work just the same. Now, if I change my character to an op 4 unit, it will say pick up money op 4 without saying pick up money blue for. So pick up money, opt for, just like so. And it all works the same. But if you wanted to make it different, so this is where you would modify it. You would just modify it inside of the script so something different happens when a opt for or a blue for unit picks it up. So that's a pretty general example on get and set variable. We went over add action again. And we went over kind of little details on on player killed. We display that it ran when the player is killed, duh. As well as we were able to get our old unit out of this. We didn't touch on killer, but it's the exact same as doing this, just with this being a 1 instead of a 0 since it's the next element over. So that's all for this one. And, well, I'll be making more.